Hello everyone. Now the video you're about to see is my second time out after a four and a half week break. So I'm going to assess my game and see what's going wrong. You might agree with me, you might disagree with me. What I'd like to see is some more comments from you guys telling me what you think and have at it. If you think I'm doing something wrong, say so. I'm not going to be offended, I'm not going to be upset by it. But how do you assess your own game when you don't have a camera? Well, you do have a camera. You got a phone. Almost everybody has got one of these phones. So put it on video, put it on slow motion, and then you'll be able to see, you know, get your mate to record you making half a dozen swings or 10 swings round, round the golf course with different clubs. Put it on slow-mo and then you'll be able to see your positions, you'll be able to see where you're aiming. Now what you're gonna see of me in this video is pretty disgusting. And I've already spotted quite a few errors while I've been editing it. Now the, it is Green's maintenance wheat, so they've been hollow tined, they've been sanded, and the grass is growing through. So they're slow, they're lumpy and bumpy. So we'll forget about the putting and we'll forget about when I've chipped on and it's just pulled up a long way short. So let's just stick with the golf swings. And as I say, have at it, don't be afraid. Get stuck in. Cheers. So here we go. If you're going out on the course with a friend, with your phone, you might want to record those tee shots that you have trouble with, or greens that you struggle to hit. This is a voyage of discovery, not an opportunity to beat yourself up. So for instance with that shot, I got everything right and then forgot about the wind. I should have been taking more club. But it was a good shot, it did exactly what I thought it would. Ball slightly above my feet, a bit of a one yard draw. Now Green's maintenance is going on and we're at the point where it's hollow tined and sanded and now the grass is growing through. And they're giving it a chance to grow before they cut it. 90 yards gap wedge out the rough downhill landing on a downslope. There's nothing I can do about this to actually stop it by the hole. So I'm not going to beat myself up for the fact that I landed on the downslope and it released a long way past. And as you can see when the greens are a bit slow and a little bit bumpy I struggle to get the ball to the hole and then in the hole. Now I was aiming left there and my shoulders were even further left. I was allowing for the wind, but I certainly didn't get it right. So that's the first fault I've spotted. I'm a little too open and my shoulders are open to that. I push the drive a little, but it's not a biggie. I'm standing open here because I am trying to get into the back of the ball steep and get some height out the rough. And I failed to do that, which isn't surprising. You don't always get the contact you want out the rough. That's life and that's golf. Well here is my big fault. I bow the left wrist on the takeaway. The club head gets behind me. From there, there's absolutely no way I can square it up. So it's a little thin, it's out to the right, and I'm in bother. Now I've had this fault a very long time. I've got some video of me from 2011. 
where I'm doing exactly the same thing. All I can do is go and see Matt, get some instruction, and work on it, and try and minimise it as much as possible. It is very, very painful to my score. Here we go again with the driver. I've got a huge gap between my arm and my chest, and the wrist is bowed. From here, I'm dead and buried. Sure enough, it's out to the right. So hopefully if you start doing this with your phone, and you can stop it, you look at the positions, you should be able to sort yourself out without necessarily having a lesson. I always go and have lessons because then I can sharpen everything up. But even without lessons, I can take the fix that I had last time and work on it. I know what the fix is. But I just choose to take Matt's help because that works best for me. The only way to figure out if I've got enough length to get over the pond, whether my speed is back up to normal or not, is to try and get over the pond with an old ball. And I didn't. A nice six iron into perfect position. That's a good shot. 83 yards with a sand wedge is a bit of a stretch. And when you're trying too hard, you make mistakes. And not being able to trust the sand wedge, I play a long chip and run with inevitable results. Especially when I haven't practiced it because I haven't been playing recently. Another little test. Can I hit my one yard fade with the seven iron? And the answer is yes. So the takeaway that time must have been an awful lot better. And it's nice to be able to hit a proper golf shot rather than the rubbish I have been. Well that's the nine done and I really don't know what to say other than obviously sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. And the first time I swung the club where I felt like I was a golfer again was that six iron on eight. You know, nothing below here is working properly. It's all very, very stiff. I've forgotten my feels. I've forgotten my positions. It's time to get on that phone and give Matt a ring, get that first lesson in. And I think it's time for me to work on flexibility as well. Get this body rotating better. Now I'm off to Thailand in the near future, an expensive golf holiday. If that won't motivate me to work on my game and get better, then nothing will really. And I'll have to take a hundred balls with me instead of my usual dozen. But I'm not giving up on this round. We're going round the back. We're gonna finish this off. We're gonna find some pars. We're gonna find some feels and some positions and try and hit try and hit it an awful lot better. Oh, I'm not worried about the short game. That will come back all on its own. As soon as greens maintenance is done and the greens are tidy again, I'm gonna be getting closer to the hole. I'm gonna be tapping in rather than leaving myself five and six feet and missing it. So I'm not in the least bit worried about that at all. Let's crack on and do a damn sight better. 10th hole out with a three wood. I'm really going to put the blinkers on and try very hard. Ah, oh, fuck it. Oh, 
Well, this is one of the better ones. Pitching wedge, ball below the feet. Very nice, clean contact. And into the green. So you get to pat yourself on the back as well as beat yourself up. But then we shouldn't be beating ourselves up when we're on this voyage of discovery. 176 playing about 195. 20 degree hybrid. Absolutely nutted. No complaints. Can't say the same about the putting. Twelve and another one of those. Bowed wrist out to the right drives. Fortunately it's not so bad because we actually hang on to the golf course and not go out of bounds. But you can see how much this fault is causing me a considerable amount of pain. So it's good to record yourself. Then you can see what's going on in those bad shots. I put it right. A iron going to play the draw. No draw, just managed to shove it to the right edge of the green where I was aiming. And you can see I'm pin high. So it was the right bat. Just didn't quite achieve the close club face. So that's another thing to work on at the range. 14th, go with the hybrid. Now, I'm just aiming ever so slightly left. And I've hit an ever so slight draw. It was a good shot. I'm not going to beat myself up. 8 iron, that's about the large, uh, largest club I can hit. To draw this round the corner. 148, 6 iron, uphill into the wind. Perfect little fade, even though the balls were above my feet. So there's a lot of good in this. Despite the big fault, there is an awful lot of good in this. Driver down the middle. And another one of those out to the right which I neatly get away with. This came out dead, and I really did think it would come out of this rough dead, but it's gone straight. So I'm not gonna mark myself down for the ball doing exactly what I thought it was gonna do. So be realistic as well as looking for your faults. Talking of faults, I'm not too sure what happened here. One two one nine iron came up very short. I think I was down on swing speed a little bit. Three wood at the right hand green side bunker. And obviously it's flapping around again. It's well right. And worse than that, it's left me in this no man's land position of 53 yards. I mean, who on earth practices 50 yarders all the time? I certainly don't. So no man's land is not the place to be. Well, after a poor tee shot, at 
least this one is decent. It's a bit long, but it was decent. And then I follow it with a complete whiff of a chip. Well, that's my assessment on my game. I know what I've got to do. What are you going to do with yours? Cheerio!